just enjoy doing this. I don't know why. Well, this is never my favorite thing to do, but I think I need to replace the fork seals on here. I also know that I gotta pull the forks off because I need to set the preload correctly on the emulators, which I did not do when I filled them back up with 15 weight fluid. So I'm gonna get the forks off, get the wheel out. Got my new pit bull stand thing that's supposed to go on the back, just came in the mail today with my new uh, fork seal driver. So obviously that's not the right place for it, but I was just kind of curious how it fit. And I guess I will just get those off and get ready to make a mess again. I don't want to waste or throw away all of this fork oil because it's new. So I'm gonna try to capture as much of it as possible and put it back in once I get a new seal, put the new seals in. I forgot to take the calipers off first. So I had started to make a how-to video because the first fork went so well. I was like, oh, I could just do that. Then I realized when I reassembled this the first time, I reassembled it incorrectly. So uh, I probably shouldn't be doing a how-to video on forks right now. I did get my little Harley emulator out and I just set it to three turns of preload. It had no preload on it when I put it in before and that's something that I was worried about. What I actually reassembled incorrectly was for, I have no idea why. I had the spacer and the spring. <laughs> in the wrong direction, which is very stupid, uh, but I did. This damper rod bolt, I need a new one. It's got enough bite still that I'm gonna use it one more time. I'm gonna get new ones on order because I'm worried about that. So I should probably just have two new ones because those things are just such a bitch and a half. That's why I bought the impact wrench in the first place. I did buy a new 41 millimeter impact or uh, motion pro seal driver, worked out real good. Um, and then I did for the first time ever, buy one of these fork oil level gauges, and I set the other one to 110 millimeter air gap based on some recommendations that I saw. And I'm just gonna guess, I'm just, I'm gonna run 15 weight on this, and I'll try another one at some point. I, I, I don't know what it's gonna be doing. I can see that I've got my damper rod drilled out to 10 millimeters, and the previous owner had taken the oil locks out, and I'm with that. I don't want them in, I'm not gonna be using them. Just pulled this over to see exactly what he had all out, but I'm not going to be running the oil lock, so I'm going to put this one back together now. Yeah, I'll get, it shouldn't be too hard. I'm putting some all-ball seals in, um, kind of contentious because some people really don't like them, and I've never had an issue with them. Everyone that I've ever put in is still not leaking, so that's what I'm using. Some red rubber grease and some cellophane over there to get the seal over the top. We should be good. So I do hate changing fork seals. But they do come with the best gift afterwards. I just enjoy doing this. I don't know why. Hopefully, that's a good seal. So this really fucking blows. The reason I bought this $89 piece for the back was because I was worried about just potentially, because of how many times I'm taking the rear on and off, potentially nicking something up or Ham fisting something or bending the axle or whatever. I'm going to set this thing up and it's always a little bit of a balancing act. And I had it all set and I was ready to push it through. And then I heard it crack. I knew exactly what happened. On the Speedo thing, these super goddamn brittle plastic pieces just fucking broke off. I cannot find that third broken prong. I actually think I kind of want to try it, see if I can epoxy these on. I just mixed up some two-part, and of course, I can't find it. Well, I got this piece glued back together. I can't find the third thing, and uh, I actually think this would still continue to work, but they don't all contact at the exact same moment, so it's going to stress this one first. I mean, it's pretty damn hard. I been smack it's not coming off but it's just a ticking time bomb till it does go and I ended up ordering one for 25 bucks so that'll be here in two weeks or so but I should still be able to install the front wheel and roll it because I want to get it running again I want to synchronize the carbs and whatnot maybe get some of the bodywork on uh, whatever it's a 
$25 lesson in patience. So, should, probably should have been in there and lubricated the thing up anyway, so. I just don't know where that little piece went. Been looking all over, I was thinking maybe it fell into here or whatnot, I cannot find it. Oh well, not the first Speedo I've broken. Probably won't be the last. Well, the forks aren't leaking anymore. It's rocking it around, and previously I was getting a whole bunch of residue. Uh, I never saw it like dripping, but I was getting quite a bit. So, looks like I did at least one thing right. So that's. That's pretty neat. Boy, the Packers are really getting their asses tore up by some unknown bum out of the University of Michigan. I think the guy almost went undrafted. Still can't figure out why this light keeps burning out, but I can see that light is all fogged up. So I'm going to try replacing it one more time, figure out if it's just a bulb issue or, or if I got a wiring issue. So brand new glove. Pull that bad boy out, put a new one in. It's going to work, and then it's probably going to blow out at some point, and I don't know why. Fuck you. What do we think? Is it gonna work right away? Cause I bet it will. And then it'll blow out at some point. Uh, I think it's that way. I think I just guessed wrong. I think it's that way. You gonna blow out again on me? You little bastard. <laughs> So the Packers are going to lose this thing because they don't have a quarterback from Michigan. And I'm positive that's the case because Chad Henney dove head first last week to basically put the Chiefs into the playoffs. Uh, Rodgers just pushed the fuck out. But uh, I just noticed I might as well do this now. Um, I've got a rebuild kit on this Petcock here. So it's an all balls kit. Actually, the previous owner had this. He hadn't done it yet. But I just, I'd smelled gas a couple times. Um, when you're starting it never after that, but it's kind of probably just a uh, Just happens with how the bike is because it doesn't have like an active like electronic fuel pump It uses a vacuum pump. So I might as well just do this I was gonna wrap the video up, but let's let's pull that thing apart clean it up Put the new kit in and, and then it's done and then I can put the tank back on and then I can actually run this thing I can put the new filter on I can well, I'll put the old filter on first then I'll de-snorkel the new one and put that thing on and get the carburetor synchronized and we should be well on our way. And then I, I've got another bike coming here, not mine, but basically a buddy of mine installed a kitchen sink for me. So now I have, because I refuse to do housework, I fucking hate, I'm so bad at it. And he did it in like three hours, it would have taken me three weeks. So instead of me doing that, I'll take 20 hours to get his uh, VF500 running and that'll be neat. insane thing I've ever seen. Every component in its own bag. Let's do it.
Well, that's 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 probably enough motorcycle for today. Um, I got that petcock rebuilt. It does leave me with one last question to end this video with. And when is it that society decided that instead of a standard valve, a fuel shutoff valve, that we needed to do the vacuum operated petcock? Because I believe this is one of the, it, it, I shouldn't say one of the dumbest solutions ever, because in theory it's great, but they fail constantly on everything. That one I got to deal with, the bandit flooded an engine that could break a conrod if you tried to start it and you didn't know it was like that. This one was leaking. I think I reassembled it. I just, I think it must have happened in the early 80s, like 81, 82, because that bike housing, that was in 84. I haven't encountered it on any bikes that I've seen from the 70s. So at some point in the 80s, they must have decided early 80s that people were too stupid to use the petcock to shut off the fuel valve when they stopped and weren't running the bike. And because their float valves may be sticking, they may end up flooding their engine. So we should create this elaborate system that uses vacuum to pull fuel only when the bike is running. And it makes a lot of sense. I really do like, I appreciate where they're coming from, but they don't fucking work. Not, not for long. I mean, they work for a little while, but then they stop working. And then it's a goddamn thing that you gotta deal with. I don't, I don't like them. I don't want to deal with that one. I'm going to delete it on that one. At least that one on the interceptor has a true off. This one has a true off. Suzuki decided we don't even need an off because the vacuum operated petcocks are going to work so damn good that we don't even need an off. We just got prime on and reserve. Honda had a little bit more foresight in whenever they designed this one in 1980, well, probably 82, 83. I just wish I was born in 88. So I wasn't there when we made this decision that we needed to move to vacuum operated petcocks because I think I could have raised some good points as to why we shouldn't have. Uh, if you watch this far, thanks for watching.